I was beginning to believe I knew who you were behind that mask. But it's impossible. My master could never be as vile as you. Anakin Skywalker was weak. I destroyed him. Then I will avenge his death. Revenge is not the Jedi way. I am no Jedi. This exchange in Twilight of the Apprentice is poignant and powerful, a capping moment to a confrontation that had been years in the making ever since the start of the Clone Wars TV show. So powerful is it that it is remembered, quoted, and elevated by many, and is seen hands down as the best episode in Rebels. But what if I was to tell you that this confrontation doesn't work? What do I mean by this? It's all in the build-up between these two characters and their motivations going into this confrontation, as well as the writer's understanding of said characters. For many, it would not be surprising to hear that most people believed that the last time Anakin and Ahsoka interacted with each other before their reunion in Rebels occurred at the end of Season 5, when Ahsoka left the Order. Naturally, this would make sense, as the show was cancelled soon after, and is regarded as one of the most powerful moments in Star Wars. Because of this, it would also be natural to assume that this scene was where Ahsoka and Anakin's relationship ended, in complete tatters. This notion was further reinforced when unfinished footage from the cancelled season started to appear, reinforcing the negative effects of Ahsoka's abandonment of the Order on Anakin. Ultimately, these disgruntled emotions will be exasperated further by his transformation into Darth Vader. The importance of how this relationship ended is played into the build-up to their confrontation in the show, with Ahsoka feeling guilty for leaving Anakin, and Vader ready to murder her for abandoning him, much like he does with Obi-Wan. However, this is not how the relationship ended, as the final season of Clone Wars will be finally returning. We are shown that Ahsoka and Anakin did indeed reunite one final time prior to Revenge of the Sith, and reconciled. Mind you, this was not new information introduced later as you might think. Instead, this was information given during the build-up to this confrontation. First by Captain Rex, who mentions the Siege of Mandalore by name. Then by Ahsoka, who states that the last time she and Anakin met was when he left to go save the Chancellor and finally by Maul and Ahsoka reuniting, all but stating that they knew each other. Ultimately, this makes Ahsoka's side of the arc make very little sense. Ahsoka's motivations are plagued by her own internal guilt for leaving Anakin when she was needed the most, with even shots from their confrontation intentionally made to mirror her departure in Season 5. However, considering that they left on good terms on Mandalore, where she was given new lightsabers, clones to command, and left to fight a Sith Lord. Well, it makes this line I won't leave you. Not this time. Make no sense. Ahsoka did not leave Anakin. She came back. Ultimately, this plays in the Vader's side of things. In an interview with Dave Filoni, he discussed his thought process for developing Vader's emotional state going into the fight with his former Padawan. I personally have never felt that anything changes Vader until Luke. The Vader that we encounter in Rebels was always meant to be one devoid of emotions, except for anger, hate, and suffering. That he was so trapped inside himself because of the terrible things that had happened. Anakin never thinks of himself as betraying his friends. He sees it as his friends betraying him and the Republic. He has to live on that side of the fence because the truth is just too damning. So he wants to destroy Ahsoka, because she represents his past. She represents knowledge of who he was, and he wants to wipe that out. His son represents a potential future because his son wouldn't know who he was. So he could build a new galaxy together with his son. His apprentice is his past, and he needs to destroy her. Ironically, Vader's motivations here mirror that of his patricidal grandson, Kylo Ren. Kill your past. Ahsoka represents Anakin's past, and therefore, she must die. Filoni goes on further to state, 
Ahsoka can't represent in any way a path of redemption for Vader, or the hope that that's there because Luke is the only one that's going to be able to make that happen. And that's the story that we see. It's our belief that we could have this moment, but it's not even a moment of hesitation for Vader. He is going to destroy her, and the reason that is, is that she has the knowledge of him as a good person. She represents and is a vessel for everything that he once was, and he finds such pain in that, and hatred and anger. He doesn't want to face what he's become, but he just wants to destroy anything that reminds him of that former self. However, I find this observation of Vader to be rather flawed, especially with the arguments that Vader must destroy everything related to his past. If Vader truly was committed to this quest to wipe Anakin from existence, then why are Tarkin, Thrawn, and the Emperor still breathing, while the countless others still alive from Vader's past as Anakin Skywalker? After all, all three know of his true identity, yet instead of destroying them, he allies himself with them. Vader is driven by the betrayal of his friends and family. This much is true. That is the source of his pain, and that pain is his power. A Sif does not destroy one's past, but instead embraces it, harnesses it. This is ultimately the reason as to why Vader cannot destroy Anakin. To do so would mean letting go of his greatest failures, his pain, and thereby his source of power. Which brings us to how Vader would view Ahsoka, and to do that we must understand how he viewed Obi-Wan. In Vader's mind, Obi-Wan is the great betrayer. He stood against him, caused his wife to betray him, left him a crippled man, robbed him... <laughs> Wait, are you f***ing robbing me? I'll give it to your son someday if Padme isn't, you know, dead. I mean, she looked pretty dead to me from up here on the high ground. And was responsible ultimately for the death of his wife and his unborn children. From Vader's perspective, his hatred of Obi-Wan is quite justified, and his lack of hesitation in cutting him down, even more so. However, that is not his relationship with Ahsoka, as this was not how their relationship ended. This was. Effectively, this would have been as though Obi-Wan and Anakin's relationship ended when Kenobi left to fight General Grievous, still in good terms. Because of this, Ahsoka is not part of the series of events that left Vader the way he is. Unlike Obi-Wan, Ahsoka did not betray him. She has done nothing to earn his unbridled wrath, that he would cut her down in an instant with no remorse. Ahsoka is not Obi-Wan. This is ultimately the reason why Vader sought Luke out so much. He is both a part of his past and not. He was his one chance for a fresh start, away from who and what he was. He did not betray him, nor did he betray Luke outright. It was for this reason Luke, unlike Obi-Wan or even Padme, was able to reach him and save his father. In many ways, this is exactly the case of Ahsoka. Unlike all the others, her relationship with Anakin did not end in betrayal. She is a part of the happiest part of his life, and not the most painful, just like Luke. This would make Ahsoka the only other candidate aside from Luke and Leia capable of saving Anakin Skywalker. So, would Vader kill Ahsoka? Potentially yes, but not because she represents his past, but because she is a threat that cannot be easily corrupted. Unlike Luke who is still young and could be molded with the right influence, Ahsoka is an adult firmly set on her own path. She would not join Vader, and would fight him perhaps with this new understanding of how things should have been built up to save his soul. While Luke ultimately was the one to save Anakin because of his unconditional love, to say that Ahsoka did not have a similar potential is short-sighted, and showcases a real lack of understanding of what Vader's character is. He is not a monster doing monstrous things for the sake of being evil, but instead an enforcer who fundamentally believes in what he is doing and will do what he views as necessary. To put it in RPG terms, Vader is not chaotic evil, but is instead a purposeful evil. One might even say, lawful evil. But that is a video for another day. Ultimately, I still do enjoy Twilight of the Apprentice, but looking back at it now, as I do with much of Star Wars today, I am reminded of how much better it could have been. Of course, 
This is just the opinion of one very disgruntled fan.